We Joining like us Patron. to celebrate a Scotty's Vodka Red Bull Friday is PFT commenter. And PFT, I, I, I am an AWL. I listen to the podcast. I, have you stopped celebrating since going to that Monday night game in Cincinnati? I have not. That was the that was one of the best football experiences of my life. So I've just been watching Jaden highlights all week. I've been watching uh, the All-22. I've been uh, watching my own game film that I took at it. I've, uh, <laughs> I've just been on cloud. I'm probably annoying everybody with how much I'm just talking about Jaden. I was watching last night's game. And I was like, you know, football is unwatchable when the commanders aren't playing. It really is. And uh, this is – this is a new experience, or at least one that I haven't had for a very long time. But I, I'm, I'm fun enjoying. You had it. Out there. I had a great I'm time, Mitch. And I think Mitch knows I had a great time because I was yelling at him when he was doing his <laughs> TV hit. Yep. Uh, on the field, <laughs> I was like, "Hey, Dana. Hey, B. Mitch. What's up?" I was what's trying to let you know we were getting off. We were gonna hang out if you would use. But you, the people started running you out of there. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's all good. I think I was just I was looking to scream at everybody right afterwards, and <laughs> I, I had such a good time after after the game, going out in Cincinnati, talking to a bunch of uh, Redskins Commanders fans, and just seeing seeing the people happy after a game like that was a very cool experience. You know, one thing I thought was a little um, strange: the Cincinnati fans are not very like mean spirited because they were like, "Oh man, y'all," they were buying me drinks the whole night. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. Everybody there seemed to be very nice, except yes. there were a couple people around us that were getting a little upset when we kept yelling at them to put Zach Moss back in and to take uh, Chase Brown out of the game. And they didn't really appreciate that. Uh, we also jinxed Evan McPherson before he, he missed that field. But we said we're just telling everybody around him how how, uh, how great of a kicker he was. He never misses. That's why you use a draft pick on a kicker. And then, and then he missed. And then they were pretty upset with us for that. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Dude. It's only three games, and you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself, right? But how much fun has it been to watch Jaden? And then I, I know you well enough. I, I know you're paying attention to the interviews, kind of everything he says, that he just seems so level-headed. It's kind of remarkable, isn't it? Like, he, he, he was happy, obviously. He was, he was happy with his performance, but he was not, like, freaking out. He was not – let it get to him. He was, uh, he's just kind of a, a steady dude. And a lot of people say that if you, uh, if you stay medium, you know, I think Jim Zorn used to say that. Yeah. But Jason really does stay medium where he, uh, he's in that race. Where are you in a damn wind tunnel, man? I think he's playing yeah. ball. I'm, I'm outside. I'm on the golf course right now, but um, it's, it is very windy here in Chicago. And I apologize for that. No, dude, it's all right. Um, where are you playing? Like um, you, I'm at, you have achieved a lot in life. Are you like a? Have you joined like a club out there, or do you play public, or what do you do? Buddy, this, this is this is as far from a country club as I could ever be in my life right now. I think it costs nine dollars to play. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's absolutely no. No hills out here whatsoever. Um, it is a very, very public golf course that I'm on right now. <laughs> very yeah. public. 50 cent per hole? Uh, it's one of those type of places, yeah, where it was like <laughs> you just got you just gotta show up in the morning and uh, and you just say, hey, I think I have a 10 o'clock tea time. And they're like, okay, sure, yeah, go out there. Um, it's, yeah, it's, we're, we're, we're keeping it real out here. That's what we're doing. But uh, back to the commanders, like I am uh, – I'm very, very optimistic right now, and I'm also in, in like, big-time defense mode of Jaden, where now I'm, like, I'm reading all the quarterback lists and rankings that they put out, and I'm getting upset if they don't rank Jaden high enough. Like, I, I am 100% in, and I saw – I was listening to some podcasts, and they were, like, nitpicking what Jaden did, and they're like, he doesn't really – he's not developed as a quarterback. He's not making any of the uh, intermediate, middle-of-the-field throws. I'm like, dude, did you watch the game? Did you watch? Did you watch how Jaden was on like third and long? Did you watch him on fourth and short when he was actually throwing the ball downfield to the middle of the field, getting you know 13, 14, 15 yards on a, a third and two or a fourth and two? Like, he's got it all. And um, I am getting ahead of myself. I can hear myself doing it right now. But I've, I'm very optimistic, especially considering the offense looked pretty good against the Giants as well, with the exception of some penalties in the red zone that that take seven field goals. Um, but the offense has looked really good for the last two weeks. I think it's I don't see any reason why it wouldn't continue. Yeah, and the thing, like, I'm with you. All these people with this, oh, he don't throw to the middle of the field. Who cares? He completed 21 of 23, 
They won the game. If he if he doesn't throw to the middle of the field all damn year and they keep winning and they keep putting up numbers like that, I could care less. Yeah, I could absolutely care less. It was, it was a great game. The defense is still a concern, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I saw a couple flashes where the defense looked like it had at least made some improvements. So if Dan Quinn could get us up to like a 22nd ranked defense by, by the end of the season, I guess I'll, I'll be okay with that because week one, it looked like we were just going to be the worst. And uh, and I did see some like in- incremental improvement. Uh, talking with PFT commenter here, one half of the Pardon My Take podcast, uh, worldwide, infamous, famous, whatever you want to call them. Um, you said you're paying attention to these lists, right? And mm-hmm. B and I actually just talked about this. NFL.com put out their quarterback power rankings, and they had Jaden 17th. I find that. I, I mean, if you're basing on three games this year, that seems ridiculous. A bunch of crap. A bunch of crap, JP. And this is what's awesome. We get to participate in, in the, like, getting mad at list culture now, which it's been too long since we've been able to do that. Like, what were we going to complain about? Like, complaining that Sam Howe was ranked number 26 in the league instead of number 28? Right. It, it, like, it, hey, man, Heineke deserves 24. <laughs> well, I, okay, so Heineke deserves to be higher than that. He'll be higher. But yeah, being like Sam, Sam Howell should be at least two spots higher than Daniel Jones. That was like as as upset as we we used to get. But yeah, I mean, if you're going based on what we've seen this year, I, I think Jaden is top ten. I don't think it's really make a case otherwise. And if we're going what we saw last week, I'd say that we have to be in the top five. But there's a, there's you know a lot of season left to be played. And uh, again, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm saying that as I'm currently getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I, I understand that feeling. Do, do you have any concern? So Jaden really impressed me earlier this week. He said something to the effect of, I don't get too high or too low off any game, and I just look to the next game. And with that mindset, you can't really have a letdown because you're never that much higher. Um, do you buy that? Do you have any concern coming off Monday night Jaden versus Burrow. I mean, there were a million storylines in that thing. Now you're out here in Arizona against a one and two Cardinals team. Like this will not be the national spotlight last week was any concerns about the letdown? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. I think if there is an issue with the offense, it's not going to be about Jaden getting too high and then overlooking an opponent. There, there are going to be some stumbling blocks. There are going to be, a game or two where he doesn't look right and, and he shows a little bit this rookie rust. I'm sure of that it happens to everyone. Um, but I don't think it's going to be because he's reading his own press clippings. Um, so I, I think, I think we're in the clear on that. And uh, I, I think this week, the big story is actually Cliff Kingsbury going back and uh, maybe a little cliff revenge game. Maybe a little, I would this game too, because uh, he doesn't look like he's the, the swiftest guy anymore. He doesn't look like he's, set any records in the 40 yard dash but he still knows how to get open in the middle of the field and the hands still look good so having a dude like that and uh and cliff going back to arizona i bet this game so this is no joke i bet the commander's money line to win this game in august when i was looking ahead at our wow. season and i was Man. like okay i love this i, I got it at plus 114 which is not great and then i looked at the odds yesterday and now they've gone up to plus 145 so I, I don't know. Can you explain that to me somehow? We the Commanders are bigger underdogs now than they were in August in this game. It makes no sense at all to me. That's interesting. If I I don't know how that works. If I had to guess, um, it's the defense is probably worse than Vegas yeah. expected. That that's the yeah. only that's yeah. the only logical outcome to me. Um, defense, or I mean, they're they're also just trying to split their split their heads on this thing right so maybe they just got so much money coming in on the cardinals but that doesn't really make a lot of sense either that's crazy the, the defense is worse than we expected and uh the cardinals offense is better than we expected it might be a combination of those two things that that are kind of baked in there but um, yeah I, I i think i think we can win i don't i don't see a reason why we can't i'm, I'm looking at the schedule right now and a lot of those L's that I had penciled in have somehow turned to W's after one game. And it, it was – I don't want to undersell this. It was so awesome after the game, going around and meeting all these Commanders fans from – you know, they might be from the D.C. area, some originally from D.C. that have moved uh, out of the area, and just talking to them and how happy they were. And you just see somebody else wearing the burgundy and gold 
and you go up and they got a big smile. You greet them, shake their hand, talk to them, learn a little bit about them. And then in the airport the next morning, uh, flying home, flying out of Cincinnati, just people that were that would be walking by and they'd see you wearing a commander's hat and they'd say hi, they'd come strike up a conversation with you. Like when we talk about how how Snyder like stuff is so black community, it's some of the small stuff like that where you don't get to have random reasons, random excuses to be friendly to your neighbor that you see, you know? Sure. So I, I, I love I love that experience. And it was so cool. And I was talking about having to uh, having to build a, a personal winning culture for myself after after Monday night's game. And sure. Part of that, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I don't I don't really remember about winning that I hope I'm gonna have to relearn. Like I did not wear I did not pack a second commander's shirt to bring and wear in the airport the day after the game, after you've won, you know, walking proudly through another city's airport being like, Yep, we just did that to you. Chiefs fans are excellent at that. They bring multiple Chiefs out go because they have to have their celebration shirt on for the for the flight home and so i i, I realized it was a weak point in my own game that i'm gonna have to step up um but you know i think Jaden daniels is turning me into a winner as well but i've got to learn how to win well when you are if i'm ever in town just uh, reach out to me i normally have extras might be a little big on you but you know you, you, you can I, yeah how much are you benching these days be mentioned you don't look he's low-key jack man. I, I, I don't bench yeah, exactly. So I don't know if your shirt should fit me. I, I, I got, I, I got cold. I, I, cold hey, I saw you in the stands, dude. My, my <laughs> shirt might fit you like a long dress. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> now I'm just laughing. Um, how happy were you to see? Well, dude, I don't know where your seats were. Where were you for the 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 play that sealed it? The Jaden to Terry touchdown. Where yeah. were like? Because I know where I was in the press box. I saw the loft on that ball, and I'm like, oh, he's trying to get to the corner of that end zone. But it was hard for me to see Terry bring it down, and then you see the replays of what was an incredible catch. Where were you, and what was that moment like? Okay, so I was about maybe in the worst vantage point in the entire stadium to see that play because I was in the end zone. Um, I was second row of the end zone, so down pretty low on the other side of the field, on the other corner of the end zone. And so all I saw was Jaden drop back. I saw him get smoked. I saw him take a massive shot. And also, shout out Jeremy McNichols for his block on that play. He just absolutely bulldogged that linebacker that was coming Mm -hmm. through the C-gap. So I saw all that happen. And then I saw the ball go in the air. And then I don't see anything. I just see the backs of our offensive linemen. I see a bunch of referees running around. But what I hear is the stadium go absolutely quiet. It went so quiet, and then I'm like, did he catch it? That must mean that he caught it. So it took me about four seconds to realize that it was a touchdown after he caught it, and I, I did not see Terry lay out for it in real time, but um, watching the replays, I've probably watched that replay, I'm going to say I'm gonna say maybe 100 times, maybe more than 100, but I, I've watched it so many times. It was a beautiful throw, beautiful catch. I'm so happy for Terry, too. Terry, Terry might have somebody that can get him the ball and – and can allow him to to maximize his skill set. Uh, but, yeah, I, it took me about, I'd say, five seconds, four to five seconds after Terry made that catch to realize what was happening. And I, I just knew, like, it, th- you know what was a new experience for me? Um, I was so excited when we got the ball back on offense, and I was confident. I was like, okay, well, that's, that's fine that they brought it to a one-score game again. We're just going to go right back down the field. Good. This is yeah. going to be awesome. I can't wait to watch this. And that hasn't happened to me for a very long time. It hasn't happened to a lot of people that are listening right now for a very long time. Having that, I always talk about that moment when the ball leaves the quarterback's hands. Do you feel, uh, do you feel extreme amounts of anxiety or do you feel excited about what's about to happen? And now I'm starting to feel excited. You look at the past and you, you look at a lot of things they do in practice and they do these little drop it in the trash can drill and hit the goal post. And yep. normally he's winning. <laughs> And when, when if you see how much he practiced at putting it right in the right spot, when it left his hands, I knew it was going to be over there. But the ultimate thing is when Terry pulled that thing in, it, it's just you know when Terry touched the ball, he don't normally let it go. So it, it's not like it's just happening. They work at it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for Terry. I, I am a little bit – there's some things that give me a little bit of anxiety about this weekend. That's our defense for sure. I, I think our defense is still a major issue across the board. Our secondary has not looked good. We've gone up against some good receivers, but still, we have not looked good at all. We've looked very bad. Uh, That worries me a little bit. And then Austin Eckler being out, that's going to be a a pretty big one for us, I think, because he's been great, whether he's catching the ball at the backfield or he's like that that pressure release valve 
uh, for Jaden or if he's running back kickoff because his, his kick returns with a new dynamic kickoff have been, I think he's been one of if not the best in the league at knowing how to how to hit yeah. those holes and where those holes are going to be. So I'm a little bit concerned about him not being in the game. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I think our offense is good enough to hang with him. It's just we need our defense to maybe hold him to some field goals or may, maybe maybe even a stop or two.